electric potential due to a uniformly charged ring. So this is our first example. <clears throat> Find an expression for the electric potential at a point P located on the perpendicular central axis of a uniformly charged ring of radius A and total charge Q. And part B, find an expression for the magnitude of the electric field at point P. Okay, so here is our uniformly charged ring. We look at a charge element dQ. This charge element dQ on the ring is at a distance square root of a square plus x square to point P. As you can see here, this is a right triangle, so that's the hypotenuse. So the contribution to the potential due to this charge element will be dVp, that is kdq over square root a square plus x square. So we can write dVp is k Coulomb's constant dq a square plus x square square root. Then the total potential at point P will have the sum of the contributions for continuous charge distribution. This is a, an integral, K integral dQ, A square plus X square, square root. And you can see that for each charge element that I pick on this ring, here, 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 it doesn't matter. Since this is the perpendicular central axis, I will have the same distance, square root a square plus x square. So that will come out of the integral. So this will be uh, k divided by square root of a square plus x square. And then I have the integral of dq. Uh, well, if I integrate over the whole ring, I will obtain the total charge. Therefore, the potential at point P can be written as uh, Coulomb's constant K total charge Q divided by A square plus X square square root. So this will be the total potential at point P due to the continuous charge distribution. Now, as for the electric field at point P, uh, you can see that when I pick a charge element dQ, the electric field due to that charge element will be in this direction. If I pick another charge element dQ, which is symmetric with respect to the central axis, then I will find that uh, this charge element will have exactly the same electric field being applied and you can see that the y components will, would cancel each other. Okay, so uh, therefore we can say that the y component of the electric field at point P is zero due to symmetry. Okay, on the other hand, knowing the potential, we know that electric field is minus gradient of the potential. So I can find the x component of the electric field at point P as minus derivative of the potential with respect to x, dv dx. This is minus kq, the derivative with respect to x, d dx of a square plus x square to the power minus 1 over 2. And this will give me minus kq multiplied with minus 1 over 2. Minus 1 over 2. And then I have the derivative of inside, which is 2x. Then I have minus 3 over 2 power, so this will become a square plus x square to the power 3 over 2. 
Now you can see that the twos will cancel and the minus signs will cancel. I will be left with a plus and this will give me the x component of the electric field but there is only x component because the y components cancel as I have shown here. So we can uh, write the electric field at point P as kq x divided by a square plus x square to the power 3 over 2 in i hat direction or x hat direction. So that will be the total electric field at point P. Okay, so in this problem, we have considered uh, an example of a continuous charge distribution, the uniformly charged ring. The uniformly charged ring carries a total charge Q and has radius A. For each charge element that I pick on the ring, the distance between the charge element and the point P of interest is square root A square plus X square. Therefore, when I write the total potential at point P as K integral dQ over R, that R is a constant for all dQ, so it comes out of the integral. Integral of dQ is the total charge Q. So KQ over square root A square plus X square is the answer. Electric field at point P will have no contribution on the Y axis because if you look at all of these charge elements, you will see that they will have components that will be canceling on the Y axis. So it's zero contribution from the Y axis. The X axis, X component is minus dV dX because electric field is minus gradient of the potential. When I take the derivative of KQ over square root A square plus X square, uh, I see that I am left with KQX over A square plus X square to three halves in I hat direction. So you can see it makes sense. All the electric field components will add up on the X axis. The total electric field will be pointing in plus I hat direction.